In this video, we will show you how the spread of action potentials through the heart can be captured as a tracing on graph paper, which we call an EKG. Action potentials spread throughout the heart prior to every heartbeat. Because this electrical current has both direction and magnitude, we can use a special voltmeter to record their strength and direction. This creates a graph we call an EKG. Okay, so what does EKG mean? EKG stands for electrocardiogram. Well, at least it does if you speak German. You might also hear them called an ECG based on the English spelling of electrocardiogram, but EKG is a more common term. Anyway, either way you spell it, an electrocardiogram shows the spread of depolarization across the heart. A typical EKG looks something like this. Notice it has a flat line with bumps and spikes. Each of these bumps or spikes is called a wave. You may also hear them called deflections. Each wave on the EKG represents a wave of depolarization or repolarization moving through the heart. The x-axis measures time and the y-axis measures millivolts. We use millivolts because we are measuring electrical signals and they're very, very small. The graph paper rolls at a constant speed. This way, when we analyze the EKG, we can see both the strength and the duration of each depolarization wave. Let's pause for a short break. Let's just be friends. Oh. Ouch! Did you see his heart drop? Okay, now that our heart is next to the graph paper, let's see how the different depolarizations cause our different EKG waves. When the heart is at rest with no action potentials, our EKG will have a flat line. This means there is no measurable electrical activity. Once the SA node depolarizes and the signal spreads through the atria, we'll see a depolarization on our graph. We call this deflection the P wave. Once the depolarization spreads to the AV node, progression slows and our EKG goes flat. Because our graph paper is moving at a set speed, measuring the length of this flat segment will tell us how much time it took for the AV node to depolarize. As the AV node depolarizes and our signal spreads through the ventricles, we're going to see three waves right next to each other. These are called the Q wave, the R wave, and the S wave. These three waves happen in rapid succession, and we often refer to them together as the QRS complex. Now that the ventricles are depolarized, we'll get another flat segment on our graph while they prepare to repolarize. When the ventricles repolarize, we'll see a general backwards flow of repolarization traveling up the heart. This produces the T wave. Now that the heart is repolarized, we'll get another flat segment on our EKG until the next heartbeat. Okay, let's walk through it a few more times. The P wave represents atrial depolarization. The flat segment represents the AV nodes delay in depolarizing. The QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization. The next flat segment represents the ventricles preparing to repolarize and the T wave represents ventricular repolarization. P wave, QRS complex, T wave, atrial depolarization, ventricular depolarization, ventricular repolarization. You may have noticed that there's no wave for atrial repolarization. This is because it occurs at the same time as ventricular depolarization and it gets hidden in the QRS complex. Notice the height difference between the P wave and the R wave. The EKG is measuring the direction and magnitude of depolarization waves. Because the R wave represents a very large signal traveling in a unified direction, the EKG records a large deflection. The P wave, however, represents a collection of smaller signals spreading out in multiple directions. This results in a weaker overall signal and a small deflection.